was going to say we've been talking for a long time, but I did want to uh, hear a little about some of your comic book endeavors because this this is a Diary of the Struggling comics artist, and I, I know you had some experiences making your Kiss comic and your uh, Kolchak comic. Would would you care to share anything about those, or are those a little too personal and painful, or? <laughs> Uh, well, the, the kiss thing was, uh, it, it was pretty bad. I don't know how much I should, uh, go into it. That, that whole project was just, uh, it, it was so, uh, bizarre. It was so, uh, uh, I don't know what word. It, it was so sort of ineptly done on the part of the publisher you know i i submitted a it was originally it was just going to be one issue and it was going to be the world's biggest comic book right gene simmons wanted to have the world's biggest comic book and they got that you know and i i wrote a script and at some point in, in the process they decided that they wanted it to be the first issue know. of an ongoing series and I mean, I mean, uh, you know, it, it was kind of written as a one-off kind of a thing. Uh, but anyway, I came up with, I and the editor came up with a 12 issue storyline that would incorporate the, the first issue and got a very nice email from Gene Simmons saying how much he loved it. I, I love it. Knocks me out, you know, something like that. And so they decided to keep me on to write the the whole thing, the ongoing series, you know, and I was really excited and enthused about it because I, you know, when I was a kid, I was a big Kiss fan. The first concert that I ever went to was a Kiss concert. Um, so I was very, very excited about that. And I wanted to do a good job, uh, but it was a licensed property and the people who owned the original intellectual property, Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley, they had their ideas for what they wanted in it. And then there were legal people and licensing people and the editors and ev everybody had ideas that didn't always match up. And I did not, I, I because it was my first real job in comics it was, it was certainly my first big job in comics i didn't want to say this doesn't make any sense based on that i mean like i would get like uh the editor would say stan lee wants to make a guest appearance in the fourth issue and i uh, okay so what how does that work exactly and he'd say, well we don't know yet he's going to let us know so if you could just leave three pages open for stan lee to be in it and uh, uh, you know, like I've already got a fourth issue <laughs> scripted. So now I have to change and I would do it. I, I would make all of these changes. And they had like one of the characters uh, did not have a, they hadn't decided on the name yet. The, you know, the drummer, the, the cat man character, right? Uh, they didn't have his name decided yet. So they were going to do a contest to name him, but you know, nobody said, okay, so what are we going to call him before then? And why is his name changing in the, you know, fourth or fifth issue or whatever? I mean, it was just, you're the but, and, you and meanwhile, <laughs> you're, you're well, the I, you I did. Solutions. Yeah. These I did. I did. I would do it. I'm like a dummy. I'm like, you know, changing everything, like, you know, all of this stuff. I'm making all of these changes based on, okay, this person wants this, this person wants that, whatever. And it's a mess. It doesn't make any sense, you know, and, and stuff would come out. And then like there, there would be these weird changes that the editor would make, you know, between like, and they wouldn't let me, I, I didn't have any contact with uh, one, there were two artists and one of them I was communicating with directly, but the other one, they, I couldn't get his email address or any, like I couldn't, I couldn't even talk to the other one, you know, and like, why are there two different artists 
doing this anyway. And I, I was trying to come up with like, why is, why does this page look different from yeah. that page? So, you know, I mean, and there, there, it was just, it was such a, it, it was so miserable. And they, you know, they fired me over the phone after like four issues. And of course, I mean, the issues came out and they were, it, it, it was bizarre. They made no sense. You know, I, I mean, there, I could, it, I could see like little glimpses of my original concept that were in there. And, you know, there were, there were things that felt like something that I had done, but that was not the overall, uh, it, that, that was not the overall feel of the book. And it, it ended up being just, you know, disastrous. And I, I felt, uh, you know, I, I felt pretty miserable after that. And I decided I don't want to be in com. I don't want to work in comics. I mean, this, this is ridiculous. So I, I didn't. And that I, I really started focusing a lot on uh, animation, I, you know, and that, that was where I, I really started getting into film festivals and things like that. And then uh, a few years ago, my friend Ed Gorman who, uh, you know, famous crime, horror, mystery, Western writer, uh, he got me a job. He, well, he got me a couple of jobs, actually. Um, I've written a couple of graphic novels for a company called Short Scary Tales. And hopefully those uh, crime and horror graphic novels. Hopefully those will be coming out soon. Uh, we'll see. Uh, it's, it's a small publisher over in England. And I, you know, I don't know how uh, prioritized those projects are. I know that the artwork is almost complete on one of them. And the other one, the artwork is maybe about a third of the way done. Uh, but then another job that he helped me get was to write a Kolchak uh, comic book. And originally it was going to be an ongoing series. And so I came up with a six issue story arc that would sort of set up an ongoing series. And then there were issues, uh, many of which were outside the control of the publisher, including, uh, unfortunately, the death of uh, Jeff Rice, the creator of Kolchak, uh, that necessitated turning it into a, you know, self-contained story. So I, I did that. There were a lot of issues with the artwork. Some of the artwork had already been done. So there were some really weird things that I had to do to get that fixed up. Anyway, it didn't, it, it, you know, it, things kept happening to prevent it coming out. So I finally decided I'm gonna write it as a novel with comic book elements in it. And I came up with a reason why some of the story would be told in you know, words and pictures and some of it had to be prose. And I put that together and I, I submitted that, I finally submitted that complete novel I don't know, back in November, something like that. Uh, hopefully that will be coming out soon. I, I don't know with the current uh, situation. I don't know if we want to talk about that, the um, lockdown, the quarantine, <laughs> whatever. Uh, uh, I don't know how much of a priority that is for that publisher right now, but uh, there is a complete novel that uses the existing artwork in a way that I hope is a, uh, you know, a satisfying story. I know that he has read it, the, the publisher has read it, and uh, he has some notes that I'm, you know, waiting on. Uh, but again, I, I don't know how much of a priority that is right now. But, you know, hopefully, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it, it could be out this year but you know we'll see so yeah hopefully this uh i i just felt relieved to get that finished one way or the other uh you know because uh, like i said that that first 
uh, you know, that kiss thing was really uh, crushing in a lot of ways because I kept being a team player and I still got shafted for it anyway. And, you know, my name is, is on that book and it's, it's terrible and it's terrible because of things that were outside of my control, but I could have, I could have said, you know what, I'm not, this, this, it's not worth it <laughs> for me. You know, if you're not going to publish what I want to write, which is what we agreed on in my pitch anyway, then, you know, why do I want to be involved in this? So my advice to people would be stand up for yourself, <laughs> you know, stay true to your own vision and, you know, don't let, uh, don't, let editors, et cetera, impose something on you that you don't feel a hundred percent enthusiastic about that you, you know, would want your name on just in the hopes that uh, you're going to look good and you maybe will get more work down the line or, you know, whatever, because there's not, there is not any guarantee of that. So, and I, I feel kind of uh, dumb for playing along <laughs> with that. Uh, but yeah, I, I feel better now and my subsequent comics experiences have been better. And I just, now if I feel like drawing a comic, I, I draw it, I do it myself and post it. And you know, I've got two books on Amazon with comics and if you want to buy them great they're awesome you should buy them if you don't want to buy them okay that's okay too <laughs> so yeah and i don't have to worry about in those cases i don't have to worry about uh you know impressing anybody <laughs> how, how did you get the job uh writing writing this kiss comic uh, I knew the editor and he knew that I was a Kiss fan. I, I mean, I should say that that's something else, by the way. I knew the original editor, the editor of the, the big book, the world's biggest comic. And he's the one who hired me. And then he was let go, I think, before that book, that first book came out. And then they brought on another editor, and I think he was ambivalent about everything. <laughs> uh, but he he stayed on for one issue, and then he left, and they brought on another editor. And that editor clearly did not. I, I mean, and and I mean, why blame? I I had hadn't had any contact with that editor, so he didn't. I I mean, he might not have known what was going on that I was having to make all of these adjustments or, you know, whatever. I don't know what was happening, but he had seen, you know, the first couple of issues and probably, you know, wasn't that impressed. I, I mean, I had one conversation with that third editor. He, he's the guy who ultimately, uh, you know, like a month later, he's, he's the one who fired me over the phone. Uh, so yeah, I, I mean, it was a matter of knowing the editor and, you know, we had a discussion about like what kind of stuff would I want to do in a, in a comic, and I, you, you know, I expressed it, and he liked it. So, uh, and then you know, he and I brainstormed stuff for the ongoing series, and we got along, you know, really well in that context, in that professional context. So, yeah, I mean, if he had been able to continue on then it would have been a, a much different story i would expect because you yeah. know he and i were pretty in tune and then uh the next two editors i, I mean it, it was it, i don't know if i've mentioned it was a, a a place called platinum studios i don't even know if it exists anymore but i mean whatever was yeah i, I there there was just a lot of turnover of editors <laughs> like within within a period of like six weeks, I had, you know, three different editors, right? So that that's not, uh, and, and the third one was like, didn't, 
I, I don't think liked anything about it, you know? So, and I, I can't really blame, <laughs> I can't really blame him because uh, I didn't care for, you know, what ultimately came out from that. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. So I was going to um, bring up one other thing that, that kind of got broached, how, how you're at the point now where if, if you have a story, you, you just do it yourself and, and you post it online and, and then it exists and it's out there. And I, I was thinking um, you and I are kind of similar in that regard. And it, it makes me think about when I started making comics in 2004, uh, my wife and I would get tables at all these different conventions and we would see a lot of the same people. And it, it didn't matter if we were in California or New York or Chicago, uh, these, these people that were excited to make comics and, and get out there and try and sell and share their stuff. We, we were all kind of going to all the same places. And so you, you would see people every one to three months, you know, as you went to these different conventions. And I, I think uh, Dragon Con in Atlanta, did you play your cartoon there? There was somewhere. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. so you know, I would see you in LA and then I'd see you in San Diego and then we would both be in Georgia, <laughs> you know? And um, as the years went by, I, I, I it, it kind of hit me at seven years. I, I kind of looked around at these conventions and I realized all the people that I knew and met and was seeing at all these conventions, I don't see any of them here anymore. And it, mm. it, it was like seven years seemed to kind of be that, that cycle of time where aspiring comics creators either were able to make a living of it or they loved it enough to keep going or they just couldn't make it work. And even if it's something mm -hmm. they enjoyed, it was like, I tried this and I couldn't make it happen. And that was the end of them, you know? And um, mm -hmm. you, I, I know, keep at this and, you know, you're, you're periodically letting me know, oh, I, I'm working on this Kolchak project now or whatever. And it's like, oh, that, that's so great to see that you're, you're still in it and involved and, and trying to make stuff. And I, I feel like that's so rare the the guys like you and I who uh, it, it's not about the money it, it's about we just love making these stories you know and even, even though we we both need day jobs we're we're finding ways to fit in that time <laughs> to to just do right. the work that we want to create um, but but it is rare because so, so many of these people and, and a lot of them I'm still in touch with and they they're just like. I, I'd love to make more comics, but I, I just can't make it work. You know, I, the, the amount of time yeah. and, uh, and the amount of money we put into it, you know, to produce this stuff, it, it just, it didn't make sense to all these other people. So I, I don't know mm -hmm. if you have anything to add. Yeah. It's uh, you know, well, you have the, uh, well, I, I feel like on a certain level, it's a compulsion and uh, you either you're either able to overcome that compulsion or you know you're not uh, you know i i don't know if uh well i i get a lot out of uh you know doing that stuff that's why i i do it uh you know but yeah it's not it's it's definitely what i get out of it is not so much uh, financial <laughs> uh you know there's a i guess there's a spiritual element to it i i mean i i have a belief that uh whenever you are engaged in a creative endeavor you are in touch with something maybe deeper within yourself or maybe even outside of yourself i don't know but i i mean that that's what i feel and so that's how you know comics are one way that i that i do that so, yeah and i i can't i can't give it up and i un i understand why other people do because i i mean i i did stop for a while you know but it it wasn't something that i could stop indefinitely and i i still even then i was doing 
uh, you know, animation at that point. So, I, you know, I was always doing uh, creative stuff.